I've had several people ask on my recent video about the PID tuning test flight, what can you do about prop wash oscillation? Uh, and that is a very, very common question, and I'm going to try and address it now. Now, unfortunately, I would love to get out there and do a flight video for you, but I'm super busy with other stuff, and it just would take too much time. So instead of just putting it off until I can do it right, I'm going to do it sort of quickly and just talk about it here, and we'll see if we can uh, get it tuned, you know, some flight video and stuff another time, maybe. Prop wash oscillation is one of the most common questions I get, and I think it's really a testament to how good our uh, f flight control software is that we're worried about this tiny little thing at the very edge of the tuning envelope. Uh, I sometimes go back and watch old videos from pilots like Sharpoo. You know, Sharpoo and Blackout, those videos were what got us into, got me and I'm sure a lot of you, into flying mini quads. And Sharpoo did amazing things for the time. They're still impressive videos even today. But you watch those videos and I, I just am astounded at how bad it looks like his copter is tuned. Now that, tell, well, hang on, hang on. I'm not saying he's a bad tuner. I'm saying he's an amazing tuner because the flight control software was so much worse back in those days that what he got out of it is extraordinary. But today, black box, or not black box, beta flight, just out of the box with stock PIDs flies 10 times better than Sharpoo's copter did, you know, a year and a half ago when he had tuned it just to the absolute edge of what was possible. And that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. And thanks to Boris in large part for, for pushing that development maniacally. Okay. So what can we do about this thing, this last little thing? Well, I have to tell you, a lot of the time I just say, screw it, I'm just going to go fly. Because there is a limit to what your copter is capable of doing with the ESCs it's got is a big part of it. The ESCs response, the braking and the throttle response of the ESC is a big part of getting rid of prop wash. It's such a rapidly changing scenario that if the ESC can't drive the motor quickly in response to the scenario, it'll get sort of out of sync with the, with the air moving over the prop and you'll get prop wash. Okay, so there's a limit on what your copter can do with its physical hardware. And there's a limit of uh, what your flight control software can do. So as we have moved from one kilohertz to two kilohertz to four kilohertz now to eight kilohertz, it seems like it has made more copters able to have less prop wash. But some copters will never completely get rid of the prop wash. So if you're trying and trying and trying and trying and trying to get rid of the prop wash and nothing you're doing is working, you may just have to live with it. It may not be worth it uh, to, to, you may not be able to. And if you are able to, it may take a lot, a lot of work and a lot of experimentation to get rid of it. So bear that in mind. You got to ask yourself, is this a, a task that I am really going to commit myself to? Because it may not be solvable, but that's not what you want to hear. So let me tell you, well, what can you do? Here's what, here's my thoughts. When I have prop wash, the first thing, a prop wash oscillation. So on a sharp turn, I get a shutter or when I'm raising the throttle after a big drop, uh, the first thing I ask myself is, can I reduce my P gains? And usually on roll is the axis that's oscillating, uh, depending on the mass distribution of your copter. Can you reduce your P gains? I find that as you increase P gains, so there's a point where your P gains are way too low and the copter flies terrible. It's soft, it's sloppy, it's sloshy, it feels drunk. You feel like you're you're a step behind it. And you can't hit your lines and your cop, you're crashing into things and you have no idea why. You raise your P gains and now the copter's flying good and sharp. It's flying good. You continue to raise your P gains. The copter doesn't actually fly that much sharper, but now it's got crazy oscillations all the time. So if you are kind of on the top end of a good P gain, and you're getting some prop wash oscillations, you can reduce your P gain. The copter still flies great, but now the, the, the oscillations are reduced or eliminated. Okay, so that's the first thing I would consider doing is ask myself, can I afford to lower my P gains? And if you know for a fact that, nope, nope, if I lower my P gains 0.2 past this, the copter starts to feel soft and I don't like it, then fine, keep moving. But if you're not sure, try lowering your P gains a little. You may find the copter flies just fine and you may find that those oscillations are reduced. The next thing to try is to raise your D-gain. And here, with D-gain, I find that there is a sweet spot where if you have just the right amount, it makes the copter fly better. But if you have too much, it makes the copter fly worse. And if you have not enough, it makes the copter fly worse. 
So the trick with degain is, number one, you got to find that sweet spot. If the copter's flying bad, you may not really be sure if you're too low or too high. And you just got to, you got to play optometrist. Is this better or worse? Better or worse? A or B, right? You just got to try one, one change, go fly, see if it's better. Try a different change, go fly, see if it's better. The other thing is that as you change your D gain, your optimal P gain will change. So you may find that as you increase your D gain, you need to raise or lower your P gain to get to get everything settled back into its sweet spot. It shouldn't be radical changes, but it, it may be there. So raise D gain helps eliminate prop wash. Part of the challenge is that with many copters, to get the D gain to the point where the prop wash is optimally controlled, the D term is too active because of the noise in the copter. And therefore, you, you end up with other, you, yeah, the prop wash is, is controlled, but then you have these other bad flight characteristics resulting from, from excess D gain and, and hyperactive D term. One thing that I would suggest that you try if you're in that situation is try vibration dampening on your, your flight control board. And you're going to, you know, this is something now, you know, I've a recent convert, I guess you're going to hear me proselytizing a lot. Maybe you'll get sick of hearing it, but you, you, so many of our copters fly very well without any vibration dampening because the noise is below a level that the PID controller can handle with its filtering and so on and so on. But if you're trying to get the D gain high enough to tame prop wash and you can't get it there because there's too much noise then you have to find a way to get rid of the noise. Well, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna add the filtering to the D term by changing the uh, the D term LPF Hertz parameter in the CL in the command line? Well, that's gonna make the D term be out of phase with the P term and, and it's not gonna help things. Okay, so that's a last resort. Soft, software filtering is a last resort. Try try vibration mounting your flight controller. It will re It should reduce the overall noise level assuming that your noise level is not already low if you have if you have super balanced motors with super balanced props then you may not need you may not benefit from vibration dampening because you already have so little vibration that you're taking you know you're taking zero and you're dividing it by two and you still got zero at the end right but if you have a moderately noisy copter and you're trying to push the d-term up to tame the prop wash adding some vibration dampening may allow you to raise the d-term to a level where it's more effective without uh without going over that line where it becomes hyperactive because it's responding to the noise so those are the two things i would i would suggest that you try uh, you could also try reducing the amount of filtering on the d term so beta flight 261 uh, or, or 260 and and forward i think they have a 70 hertz low pass filter on the d term go to the command line and look at d term lpf hertz if you want to check that and Boris has said it used to have none, no filtering, in order to keep the D term at very low latency. The more filtering you get, the more delay you get. And the more delay you get, the less effective the D term is. It needs to be very, very right there to respond to the situation, okay? So you add filtering, you add delay, it becomes less effective. But in Betaflight 260, Boris did something. He worked his magic. He made a very low latency version of the D term filter, and he decided that 70 hertz was a new good value for it but there's with any kind of filter there's going to be more delay the more filtering you do so in theory if you have a very noise free copter and you want to really push that d gain up without without getting into a weird scenario with a d term noise then you could raise that filter to a higher value or even try turning it off by setting it to zero but the other the other thing you could try is you could try making sure that you have you know, just absolute top-notch ESCs with fantastic braking and great response. Uh, if you're not flying the best ESCs, like a really good ESC with a, with a hardware gate driver, you know, and, and great braking and so on, then you're going to have a hard time tuning that stuff out. So that's what I would say is play with those things. Reduce P gain. If the copter still flies good, you should get better. Um, raise D gain, but watch for signs of excess noise. If you get signs of excess noise, then try vibration mounting your flight controller to help with that. Uh, great ESCs. And one last thing, if you get oscill oscillation when you first raise the throttle from idle, then you may want to increase min throttle. Uh, increasing min throttle will help the motors spin up more smoothly. All right, that's it for that. Um, thanks for watching. Happy flying.